In this video, we're going to examine how to graph exponential functions by applying transformations. And so we see here our general setup for transformations of an exponential function, f of x equals a times b to the x minus h plus k. h is still horizontal, k is still vertical. a is still your orientation and your shape. If you have an h value that is positive, which means you're going to have b to the x minus h. Remember when it deals with h, it's the opposite of what you see because the formula has a minus sign in it. If it's b to the x minus h, that means you're going to be going right h units. If it's b to the x plus h, that means your h is negative and you're going to go left h units. If you have a plus k, you're going to go up k units. If you have a minus k, you're going to go down k units. And then if your a is negative, it's reflected over the x-axis. If the size of a is large, it's going to be compressed. If it's going to be between 0 and 1, it's going to be expanded. So let's apply this to graph the following. We have y equals 3 to the x minus 2. We're going to graph this, and we want to state the domain and range. So when graphing this, we're going to create a table of values as we did before. This time I'm using from negative 3 to positive 2. If I take a look, I see my base is 3. That tells me I am dealing with exponential growth. And what we're going to do is we're going to just analyze what our translation would be. There is no h with the x. So here our h is 0. Remember, your b is 3. There's, no co there's nothing in front of the 3, no numbers. So a is 1. And then your k is negative 2. That's telling me I go down 2 units from the parent function of this graph. Now, the parent function of this graph is the equation y equals 3 to the x. So the parent function is going to be the same base, just no h or k. So if I take a look, I can graph this original one to see what my transformation would be. If I plug in, and I'm going to graph y equals 3 to the x, 0 for x, I'm going to get 3 to the 0, which is 1. So 0, 1 is a point. 3 to the first power is 3. If I plug in an x value of 2, 3 squared, is going to be 9. If I were to then do you know, 3 to the negative first, be 1, neg uh, be one third, then 1 ninth, one, 1 over 81, we start to see our exponential growth. Remember, it's going to approach the x-axis. It's not going to cross it. And then we're going to curve up and hit all of my points. This is what our parent function looks like. It's important to notice this because all my transformation says I do is I take each of these points and I go down two units. And so really, if I were just to take a look at my graph and I'm just gonna drag it and we're gonna actually plot the points, but I want you to see what the transformation is. I would actually take my graph and I'm gonna go down one, two units. And this is what my graph would look like. And so that's how transformations work. But when it comes to this, let's just be able to identify our transformations as we have. And then let's be able to just go to our graphing calculator, input it, and get our table of values. So I have y equals 3 to the x. Now I need to remember I need to get off the exponent and hit the right arrow, minus 2. I'm going to hit second table. Now I'm going from negative 3 to 2, and so I'm going to grab those values from negative 3 to 2. And I'm just going to fill in my table with those. And so the first one I have is negative 1.963 1 at negative 2. I'm at negative 1.889. I'm at negative 1.667. At 0, I'm at negative 1. At 1, I'm at 1. At 2, I am at 7. And we're just going to plot those points. And so at 0, I'm at negative 1. 
at two, well, at one, I'm at one, at two, I'm at seven. At negative one, I'm at negative 1.667. At negative two, I'm at negative 1.8, and then I'm at negative 1.9. And so what I see here when I'm graphing is it looks like it's approaching negative two. And I can even check that out with my calculator. Is if I were to scroll up, you notice it's approaching negative two. And so I'm going to start my curve at y equals negative two. I'm not gonna cross it, it's gonna come up smooth curve all the way up and through the points and so there's my graph domain is all real numbers this time your range we took our graph down to units this is why we need to be able to understand our transformations we're not going to use them to graph visually but we're going to use them to assist us with our range since we went down to units we no longer have to be greater than zero, we have to be greater than negative two, because the parent function, remember, is y is greater than zero, but we went down two units, so now we're at y is greater than negative two. Let's look at example number three. And so here we have y equals two to the x minus one. I'm gonna do this one just by identifying my transformations. We see here that our h value is one, our k, there's nothing being added or subtracted at the end, so our k is 0. Our base is 2, which tells me I'm dealing with exponential growth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to input this in my calculator and look at the table of values. You have 2 to the x, and the minus 1 is in the exponent as well, x minus 1 power. And then I'm going to grab my table of values, second graph. I'm going from negative three to positive two. So let's get on that window. So I can see all my negative three and positive two X values, grab it, and then I'm just gonna copy it down. At negative three, I am at 0 0.0625. At negative two, I'm at 0.125. At negative one, I'm at 0.25. At zero, I'm at 0.5. At one, I'm at one. At two, I'm at two. We know when it comes to exponential functions, our domain is always going to be all real numbers. And I'll come back to my y values for my range at the end. I'm going to plot my points. I see 0 0.5, 1, 1, 2, 2. If I were to do three, I would be all the way up to four, it looks like. So I can grab that one. And then what happens, I'm at 0.25 for negative one. You start to see you're approaching zero and you're never going to cross it. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to connect these with my smooth curve. I'm approaching zero, so I'm going to not cross that y equals zero. A little bit harder for me using the computer and then we're going to come up and go through and so there is a sketch of an exponential function for it our range we see there is no vertical shift we're not going up or down so our range is y is greater than zero and we can even see that's what we were approaching so this is how you graph exponential growth functions rely on your calculator for table of values plot them but be able to examine your k value and use that to assist you with identifying your range. When k is 0, then y is going to be greater than 0. Here we have a k value of negative 2, and so our range changed to y is greater than negative 2. And so this is how you graph exponential functions by identifying their transformations using a calculator to get a table of values and then plotting the points.